Welcome to Kino Society with Owen Shapiro. In today's episode, we have Matt Villa, a film editor whose commitment to the filming process has proved him the opportunity to collaborate on some of the finest international film productions. Matt won both the Australian Academy of Cinema and Television Arts Award and the Film Critics Circle of Australia Award for Best Editing on his work on Baz Luhrmann's big screen adaptation of the classic, The Great Gatsby. Welcome to Kino Society, Matt. Would you mind telling us a bit about your background and what attracted you to do editing above other industry jobs? I think uh, as, a, as a child who grew up in the 70s and 80s, I know it's a huge cliche to say that uh, Star Wars was a big uh, influence in me getting into, the, into storytelling. I think um, I was always interested in, I always loved films, uh, but uh, Star Wars was the thing, as you know, so many people who, before me have said, uh, that um, you know, it, the, the, the bringing together of, of picture and music and sound in such an extraordinary way really just blew my mind as a as a young as a young sort of seven year old or eight year old or whatever um and um and uh, i just just loved it and from that point you know i skipped over the whole wanting to be an astronaut and wanting to be a fireman stage and i just always wanted to be in film um because i've always loved storytelling i've always been a passionate creative writer um and I just you know, was really attracted to the, to the visual medium of, of, uh, of film. As far as, as far as what got me into editing specifically, I just, you know, I always had a dream to be a director, a writer and director, which, uh, you know, that hasn't happened yet. Editing was always felt to be that, that the closest thing to, to having a, that control over the storytelling process where you, you took all the elements and, uh, and put them together in a, in a, in a, a narrative which was always what I was really the most interested in. And, and while I harbour dreams that one day the, uh, the directing chair might be filled by, uh, filled by me, um, uh, right now editing is, is uh, yeah, that's, that's what I love the most. When, when, I, when I first went to um, my, the film school that I went to here in Australia, we, the first part of the course was, was sampling, doing a, a little sample of sound or cinematography or editing we had to try them all uh, and I really loved them all but uh, you know as I say um, cinematography uh, is a very specialized thing and sound is a very specialized thing whereas editing it feels like you're taking all of those elements and uh, and you get to kind of you know weave the story together and that was what I was most interested in so that's 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 how the direction I went. So what skills in particular are needed to be an editor? Probably the first thing that's the, the most important is a sense of rhythm and by editing there's there's, a, there's very much a musicality to editing uh that that musicality obviously changes because you um you know depending on what sort of film you're working on or what sort of scene you're working on uh that the rhythm changes but but you, there's there's a there's a real need to be aware of what's propelling the scene forward uh if it's an emotional scene obviously it's you know it's um it's not as as fast paced but you really need to to know where the emotion is and uh and and what what gives you that emotion be, be it you know you, you might be on you might be holding on a shot of the person talking but just as importantly it's holding on a shot of the person listening and seeing what their reaction is and so on in a similar sense if it's an action scene obviously things get a little pacier but uh the, the, you're, you're always having to sort of grapple with that sense of of ke- keeping the keeping the audience engaged uh without overwhelming them but also without boring them and um and i think you know you can you can have courses and you can have books and so on but there is a certain sense of that that just is within within the person that uh that sense of rhythm that sense of timing i think is is uh, is what helps sort of uh, construct a story the other the other big thing about being an editor which is you know kind of unfortunate i suppose but it really is uh a lot about um the, uh, the 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 political handling of um there's a lot of always a lot of big big egos in a cutting room with producers and directors and so on not necessarily bad egos just just you know big egos um and a lot of the editor's job is is um is arbitrating you know the opinions and uh and taking the best of the best of everyone's opinions and and applying them so i'd say uh yeah, uh, I, I use the word unfortunate. It's not unfortunate. It's just a part of the job where uh, it's probably you know seventy percent 
talent <laughs> and 30 percent political mouseness as to how to sort of hand, handle the handle the the, the various the various characters that, that make their way into a cutting room so what's your favorite thing about being an editor very much so uh <laughs> there's a thing that happens when you're cutting a film um the pro- probably the, probably my if i can start with my least favorite part <laughs> is the initial assembly when you've got a load of footage that's just coming through the door from from the shoot and you it's just that initial slog of of putting together that first run it's similar to writing a first draft of a story or even even when you sit down to write an email you know there's that kind of putting it not there's nothing more scary than being faced with a blank page um and similarly there's nothing more scary than being faced with a blank screen i guess uh, a blank timeline but um, but once that slog is done and you've got everything kind of uh, down, that's when the that's when the fun begins because you can go through and really start honing and refining the the um, the performances. And that's my that's the most fun part is 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 really exploring the performance of a character or an actor or a, a, a scene or whatever it may be, and just honing it down until you you you're really confident that you've you're telling the story in the best possible way and the the other thing that i love is um when you've got an editorial problem um that you can't solve and and i call it my aha moment and it happens there's lots of films where it happens where you you know you're trying to solve a particular problem or or convey a particular piece of storytelling and it just eludes you uh, but then you know will just come to you and you'll realize that the, the, there's a perfect pair of shots that click together or a perfect sequence of shots that sort of go together and that's when you really go aha that's how i do it and that's what i um that's what i love that's what i cherish and that, that always happens uh there's always a difficult scene and there's generally speaking a way around it and you just got to sort of sit and sit and explore it and and as long as you have the time to do so, um, you know, the, 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 the right solution may not necessarily be the, it was definitely would never be the only solution, but, um, but the, uh, hopefully the, the right solution will, will come to you. And that's what I love. I love those. I love those. Basically, I just love the, the conveying of the best story that you possibly can tell. So you already mentioned the um, Star Wars movies a while back. But do you have any favorite movie in particular? Oh, Owen, there's so many. Um, I would probably say I my problem I go to if I can say a couple, I'll say that Back to the Future to me is is almost the perfect film. Uh, it's the perfect combination of of performance and uh, action and storytelling, uh, a pace and heart. And I just, I think it's just a, yeah, it's, it's, it's very, very close to being a perfect film. I would have to say that I love, uh, and there's, man, there's so many, but um, I love Stand, the film Stand By Me, um, because I think that, uh, I, th- I think the, one of the keys to having a favourite film is something that really speaks to you personally. And, um, and the film, the Rob Reiner film Stand By Me, really, the, the heart of that really speaks to me and, and some of my experiences growing up, even though, even though it was an American film and I'm an Australian, but there was this, you know, some of those sort of childhood angst and childhood sort of um, concerns and, and friendships and stuff are, are pretty universal. And I really love that film. Another film that springs to mind is, as I mentioned to you before, The Shawshank Redemption. Um, that's a, that's a, 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 cl- a film that really strikes me as, as how you can be very, very um, considered and not necessarily fast paced in your, storytelling or editing um but really uh just strike an extraordinary balance of of um of um emotion and and engagement in a film um but they're they're, they're just three i mean there's so many but yeah they're they're the ones that i they're the ones that spring to mind right now so you're a fan of um stephen king big fan of stephen king yeah (laughs) big fan of stephen king actually yeah yeah you're right yeah i didn't didn't even think of that two two stephen king films right there yeah very much so so what does a movie need for you to say, yeah, what a good job of editing? Funnily enough, I would have to say that if you can't see the editing, you consider that a great job of editing. And by that, I mean, if you feel, if you feel emotionally fulfilled without 
feeling you like you've been sort of pushed in a certain direction or in in the case of say like an action film an action film if you feel geographically grounded you know so many a lot of a lot of the a lot of the sins of a lot of editors these days is a, a good editing means fast editing and that's just not true and you know i think of any number and i'm not i'm not dissing on marvel marvel films or any of those sort of you know um, transformers films or anything like that but a lot of those films fall into the trap of they cut so fast and so busily that you've got no idea where you are geographically and you can you know, that's who can sometimes take you out of the movie and and uh, and confuse you i think if you walk away from a film ha having felt that you knew exactly what you were doing or where sorry where you were and what you were feeling and what you needed to feel without being pushed in any of those directions i think that's a, that's a great thing and and so that's that's why my answer probably is if you can't notice the editing that's that's the sign of a well cut film um, because it means that you've been completely immersed in the story and and you've been you've been obviously taken for the ride by the editor and the director and the filmmakers um, but not felt that you've been you've been sort of uh, left sort of wanting for more or felt confused or jarred as to how you're meant to meant to feel. Yeah, I absolutely agree about modern blockbusters or like superhero movies. So it's, uh, one of my biggest gripes with them is just how fast they go and it, it's annoying. It's very annoying. Are there any editors that you admire or follow? Again, so many. At, uh, I've got a lot of close friends that are that are uh, wonderful editors, but probably the there's those people that are the spring to mind that that who formed collaborations with directors like uh, Robert Zemeckis often used he, he's retired now, but he often used um, Arthur Schmidt as a uh, as his editor uh, for all of those films that I love so much, you know, um, Back to the Future and Roger Rabbit and Forrest Gump and Castaway and so on. They had a great collaboration. Um, obviously, the uh, Steven Spielberg Michael Kahn collaboration. Um, is a, is a wonderful one. Uh, there's a, a very uh, there's a wonderful editor who I also consider to be a dear friend is um, Paul Hirsch. Um, he cut um, he actually cut Star Wars. One of the editors on Star Wars. He also cut Ferris Bueller's Day Off and um, some of those great films of the eighties and the, for the first um, Mission Impossible film. He's a he's a wonderful editor. There's so many. There's there's lots of Australian editors. Um, Jill Bilcock is a um, is a, who I know personally is a great editor as well. Yeah, there's a, there's there's a few, but they're they're just to name some of them. What about directors? Do you have any favourite ones of those? I will probably uh, definitely have to say uh, Spielberg <laughs> and Robert Zemeckis again. I feel like a broken record. Sorry, <laughs> uh, I, quite, I really like Rob Reiner as a director. Uh, Christopher Nolan, obviously. You know, Baz Luhrmann. I mean, I've worked with Baz Luhrmann a number of times, and I think, it, apart from getting on very well with him and working well together with him, I think he's one of the few guys that um, not not rare by any means, but one of the few real auteurs that sort of have his a distinct style and a very recognisable style. And um, and I think that's a that's a that's a good thing. You know, you don't you don't necessarily have to have a director that's got a distinguishable style, but it's it's nice when they when they're there. George Miller is another one. Uh, you know, who have that kind of that sort of unique vision, I guess. Is there a project that you would consider your best work? There's probably a few for different reasons, but I, I think, I, I, I show, and, I, and I've loved every job I've ever done. There's, there's very few times where I've walked away from a job not having had a great time with both the people or the, or the, or the project. But I think that one of the film, one of the films that I'm most proud of, I think, is a film that you may or may not have seen called Predestination. It was a Speary Brothers movie um, with Ethan Hawke and Sarah Snook in it, um, and it's a, it's a time travel film. And I think what I'm the most proud of with that film is it was a it was a wonderfully written script by the Speary Brothers. But there were some challenges in the cutting room uh, just with its with the nature of the film. And if you haven't seen it and you're going to see it, I won't give it too much away because it's it's got a massive massive spoiler at the very end of it, which is um, <laughs> which would give it too much away. But uh, it involves time travel, and it was very, it was quite a challenge because there was uh, there was parts of the story that needed to give away enough so the audience weren't confused. Uh, that you needed to hold back enough so that they weren't ever ahead of the game, um, and that was quite a challenge. And I know that's not a rare, you know, several films, you know, would face that, but that was the one that I've worked on that they really needed that kind of correct balance to to make it work, and um, and I feel really proud 
um, of that uh, of, of the way that came out. But yeah, another film that I'm there's a couple of others. It would be Great Gatsby. I'm quite proud of just because it was such a big job and uh, to have sort of wrangle all that into a into a manageable film. I think it was um, it was uh, it was a challenge which I really enjoyed. Water Diviner, which was directed by uh, Russell Crowe. Um, you know, some some directors are particularly collaborative and and let you do what you do best. And Russell was a very very uh, wonderful collaborator, um, but very generous collaborator. So he was very um, he was very sort of uh, even though he definitely it was all his vision, he very much handed over to, uh, so, and allowed me to to sort of uh, make a lot of creative choices, which I'm really proud of. So. Yeah, there's a, there's a few. I mean, a bit of yeah. I'm proud of every film, but so uh, there's just a couple of sort of highlights, I guess. Do you ever go to the set of a movie you edit? Uh, yeah, quite often. Generally speaking, um, you're nearby when they're shooting, so you tend just to sort of visit set, even if even if for no other reason to say hello. But but often uh, to, to show the director some some rough assemblies of what he's shooting, so that you you may you may assemble a scene and realise that. They need to get something further to shoot something further, so you can go down and um, talk to them about that. But yeah, I really love the, the hustle and bustle of set. Uh, in fact, the film I'm working on right now, the Baz's uh, Elvis movie, uh, is being shot in another state to where I am, and our borders are closed down here in Australia, so I, I can't be up there. <laughs> um, uh, I'm working remotely, and I'm kind of missing it. I kind of miss being so new set and the, the hustle and bustle of set. Do you have any future projects that are coming up? Uh, well, I'll be involved in Elvis now, the Elvis biopic for um, for a while. Um, we're, we're just about at the end of the shoot. We've got one more month of shoot to go. It'll be about a year in post production, so it's kind of filled the dance card for for now. And then what what, what lies beyond that, I'm not too sure. A while back, I asked you about what things you uh, like you like to see in movies in terms of editing. But um, are there any movies in particular that made you? think this is bad editing oh yeah wow um I, well i think probably yeah similar to what we both mentioned earlier just uh, that's just it's just those films and they're becoming more and more now unfortunately where you know i i would have to sort of say the transformers films for as, as an example not, not to pick them out singularly but as an example of of things that you i you watch those, or the, or the recent Justice League film, where you just watch them and you you kind of get to a point where it's it's sensory overload. Editing is a lot of editing is about finding ebbs and flows in stories. I think as we both kind of mentioned earlier, when talking about bad editing, and I don't want to be insulting to the people <laughs> working on these shows, but I think things like Transformers or you know the last Justice League film, as an example. Where where just the uh, you watch them and you've just you're exhausted like the, there's a, there's a sensory overload that just happens and the, 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 the trick with editing is you know it's all about ebbs and you've got to find ebbs and flows and you can't just sort of be ramp ramp up the energy to eleven and leave it there because the audience gets tired and they get exhausted and they they've got no idea what's going on and and I think. You know, you leave a lot of these modern superhero films, again, not to pick on them, but that they are sort of guilty of it, where you, it's just, you've got no, they have these fights in, and you have no idea what's going on. You don't know where you are geographically, and, and it's just too fast. And you've got to, you've got to help the audience along. I mean, feed the audience, but you do, it's your responsibility to let them be able, give them the tools to follow the story. And a lot of those films fail in that, to me, that you've got no idea where you are or it's just so chaotic that it's just it's just exhausting and you tend to tune out after a while so i think yeah that to me is bad editing is um when you you're not giving the audience the chance to to keep up yeah a lot of times those movies just look like a mess of cgi everywhere yeah the third act of any <laughs> the third act of any of those superhero films is just two cgi blobs fighting each other generally and that's just, it's just exhausting <laughs> so what advice would you give to an aspiring film editor i think probably it's it's a difficult one because these days back in the old days not to sound old <laughs> but back when i started it was it was a little easier to to ask an editor can i come in and can i you know sit behind you and just watch and and watch what you do and and learn because you were you were sitting in front of a big film editing Steenbeck or a chem 
and there was you could sort of sit and watch and and, and engage but these days it's so closed in and, and you know it's all computer driven so there isn't that sort of it's, it's a little bit diff more difficult to find engagement with an editor if you're if you're just sitting in the room with them. That having been said, I think the best thing to do if you can is to is to cut stuff. It's so easy these days to shoot something on your phone or shoot something on your on your camera or whatever and and just sit and, and tinker away with it yourself. That will sort of get you involved on a personal level in sort of uh, practice, practicing the craft. And then on a professional level, you know, you know seek out films seek out um, editors and see if you can if you can get an internship with them it's very it's very difficult these days to immediately say can I come and be your assistant because that that's a skill set unto itself but if you can uh, get onto film as an attachment or as an intern or even or even contact a, an editor as a mentor just to sort of talk to them about how they got into the business and and it's, it's it's such a small world, even even on this international scale that that you and I are speaking on now. You know, even then, like there's lots of lots of editors and lots of assistant editors that I've met over the years who are in America, and uh, and so it's so it actually is quite a small world, the editorial film production uh, feature film world, and so it's you know if you ring someone up and make yourself known to them and and the, you know. That you, you'll you'll remember those people and then like people will ring me and say do you know of any assistants or any interns and if if someone's rung me up I have their name and I can put them forward so so you know go out there and and uh and you know make yourself known and, and ring ring up people and and uh and see if you can find an internship with her on a film or whatever that's sort of the that's the best advice I can give and yeah unfortunately you know again there's a lot of great assistant editors out there who are who are looking at becoming editors. Um, so there's there's always someone sort of trying to move up. But if you can get yourself in the door, uh, then you'll you'll be part of that circle and, and you can move along with them. But definitely, if on a on a personal level, if you if you want to practice cutting, it's really easy to do these days. You can you can shoot whatever you want on so many different formats and cut them on your laptop. So um so yeah, practice. That's that's the best way to practice. Finally, where can my listeners find you and connect with you? I'm not a big Facebook user or a social media user, to be honest, but I do have a website on um, mattvilla.com. Yeah, just uh, they can see what I've done and contact me through there. It's mattvilla.com. All right, that's all for today. Don't forget you can subscribe to Kino Society on iTunes and Spotify.